when I was told that I'm going to share the Holy Spirit of God as I was praying and wondering what is it that I'm going to speak to the, the Wednesday Fellowship, God spoke to me and reminded me this word that has been ministering to me that it was so powerful in my life at one point. And I'll tell you that testimony towards the end. I hope time is going to allow and I believe that you're going to be blessed. I want us to share today on the topic of letting go and letting God. Letting go and letting God. And uh, we are going to have our guiding scripture from the book of Exodus chapter 2 from verse 1. Exodus chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 3. And, and a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child, he had him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with herself and pitch, but the child in it and laid it on the reeds by the rivers. And his sister stood far off to know what would be done to him. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this evening. Thank you, King of Glory, because my Father, we are here, and God, you are where we are here. The word of God in Isaiah 55, 11 says that, God, you do not gather your people in vain. And every time, my father, you let your word out, king of glory, there's a, come, a purpose that you want this to accomplish. And it is the desire of our heart this evening, Jehovah Lord, that the one that you've set forth for us, king of glory, is going to be accomplished in our lives, oh God. We are praying that Jesus, this evening, you're going to minister to us, my father, in a voice that you're going to, um, to understand, my Lord, that our lives shall be transformed, O oh God, and we shall live this sanctuary better than we in the name of Jesus Christ. We put our faith and we our trust in you, O oh God. Even as I stand to speak, Jesus, I pray for a refreshed anointing of the Holy Spirit, that God, I may not speak my words, O oh God, but I pray that my Father, that my thoughts and the meditation of my heart, King of glory, shall be pleasing unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we believe this in, Je in Jesus' name. Amen. So this word of God, as I said before I began, is a one that has been speaking to me and, I've, I, I, and it has changed my life in a big way. Letting go and letting God. When we say we are letting go, it means there is something that we are holding and we need to release it. And when we release it, we don't just release it in the air. We don't just release it in a vacuum. We don't just release it, release it in a void. We release it in the hands of God. And this scripture that we've read in Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 speaks of a very moving story. We know Moses as a deliverer, but the foundation of Moses was not one of a kind that one would admire. Moses was born by, by, by a Hebrew woman, and he was born at such a bad time when her, King Herod was looking for boy children with an attempt to kill them. So in this scenario, when the mother of Moses bore this son, he looked at him and realized that he was very handsome. And he decided to hide him because he knew if by any chance he landed in the hands of the people of Herod, he would be killed. So he held the child until the child was three months. The child could not be in there anymore. That she could not have any ability to protect Moses anymore. So you can imagine as a mother, I can see we have mothers here. When you reach a point... You have been nursing your child, you have burdened your child, but there's a circumstance here that is pushing you to put your child away. I can assure you it is not easy. So I can imagine what could might have been going through this woman. The word of God says that she looked for a basket and put, and, and, and put Moses in it nicely. And on the down surface, she put some tar. Tar is a, a kind of uh, some, the one that is used for tarmac. 
So that there is no water that she could put inside that could enter and interfere with the baby. And as she was doing this, you could imagine the pain, the bitterness, and the anger she was feeling towards Herod. Because it is because of him that she had to do all this. You can imagine the number of questions that were going through her mind. At some point, she was wondering, God, why would you allow me to give birth such a time like now? But we all that, she did something that not many could do. She put the baby in the basket and went to River Nile. And we know River Nile is one of the longest rivers in the world. It is full of crocodiles and other dangerous animals. So as she put the, the baby there, it was a sign of faith. Praise God. So she went and put the baby in the river and just watched the baby being carried away. You can imagine how she felt in her heart. But when she did that, it was a sign that I have done my best. I cannot keep this baby any longer. But now I have to let him go. And when this woman let it go, I am sure God in heaven saw the pain and the pinch this woman had. And from where she let Moses go, that is where God started. Praise the name of the Lord. Where she let Moses out of her hands, that is where God started. Actually, we are not told anywhere that she cried. We are not told anywhere she was worried. Actually, if you read the next verse, it is the sister Miriam who was so disturbed that even she kept on walking by the riverside. But you can be sure that was not long. Praise the name of the Lord. Being a very small child, she could have gotten tired, fallen asleep, so that was not enough security. But the fact that this lady let it go, God took over. Praise God. And it is the time that we need to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, what is it that you have been holding for so long? What is it that has been pulling us down for so long? What is it that has rendered us peaceless for so long? What is it that you've been carrying in our hearts for so long? God is calling us this evening that it is the high time we let go and let God. Praise God. We remember even Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 9. I'm not going to read because we are short of time, but I'll just paraphrase. When God spoke to Abraham, he told him to rise up early in the morning and go and sacrifice his son Isaac. And he specifically said, and you offer him as a burnt sacrifice. Another situation that would call someone not to do what they are told to do. But the word of God says that Abraham did not even question God. He woke up early in the morning, he packed the firewood, he took his son and put him in the donkey and went to sacrifice. And he went. Actually, here, the other, the other people who are concerned, when they were just about to reach the mountain that they are going to sacrifice, it is Isaac who was wondering, we have the firewood, we have prepared an altar, but where is the lamb? And the father was still not worried. He said that God will provide. Praise the name of the Lord. And when God saw how Abraham let Isaac freely from his heart, God began there. And it is at that particular point when Abraham lifted his sword, ready to kill the child, the angel of God came and spoke to Abraham and told him, do not kill your son. Luke assigned and he saw a ram and he took it and sacrificed it. Praise the name of the Lord. Another indication that indeed, yeah, we want things so firmly when we are only supposed to let them go. And when we let them go, God takes over. When we let them go, God takes over. In our sharing this evening, I want us to reflect. And, and as you want to let go, you must come to a point that you need to identify what is it that you need to let go in your life. You cannot let go things that you don't know. 
What is it that is pulling you down? What is it that is giving you a sleepless night? What is it that is making you shed tears? What is it that has been making you grumble? And Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12 verse 1. It says that, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so crowned, a great crown of witnesses, let us slay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run the race, we run with the endurance, the race that is set before us. The word of God is reminding us that now that we are surrounded, there are so many people that are looking up to us. We need to lay assigned every weight and every sin. Give us the song of songs or songs of Solomon 2, 15 to 17. The word of God says, catch the, little, the foxes and the little foxes that spoil the vineyard. For our vines are tender, have tender grapes. And then Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. The six things that God hates. Yes, the seven are abomination. Next verse. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift in running to evil. A false witness who speaks lies. And one who sows discord among brethren. Praise the name of the Lord. What are the things that God is calling us to let go? We need to let go of the, the foxes. The things that look so big. Things that are like unforgiveness. The shedding of innocent blood. You know, we, we can kill someone even just merely through our words. You can destroy someone by the, the, the words that you speak against them. And that's why the book of uh, Proverbs is telling us the things that God hates. Those are the things that we need to let go. And he's naming them. The lying tongue. You know, we are looking like a lying is not really a big thing. And that's why the, the songs of someone was saying, catch for us the foxes and the little foxes. One as if you were. So the lying may look like it's a small thing, but it is among the little foxes that destroy our vineyard, that hinder us from reaching the promises of God. Then he talks about um, in letting go, the things that God hates, a heart that devises wicked schemes. When you sit down and you're planning evil against your brother, against your workmate, against your whoever, God is already at a trend with you. And those are the things God is calling us to lay off today. Feet that are quick. To rush into evil. When you hear, especially the young people, party kuna disco, where there is kuna wine, there is alcohol, that is where your feet want to run. God is cautioning you this evening that those are the things that we need to let go. He's also talking about false witness. When we stand to accuse other people falsely, those are the foxes and the little foxes that God is calling us to let go. And other foxes, like unforgiveness. I know people could have hurt us so much. Probably we gave them money and they refused to pay us. We worked for them and they refused to pay us. We carry bitterness. Probably we have been in relationship that left us so wounded. Those are the big foxes that God is calling us to let go. Praise the name of the Lord. To let go and let God. Fear, anxiety, and worry are the foxes that God is calling us to let go. You know, we are in a situation where there is an outcry of economic crisis. We are wondering even how you are going to pay school fees. The fear to our workplaces have been increased, but yet the salaries have remained the same. 
with all that, God wants us to let go the fear. Praise the name of the Lord. To let go the worry and look upon him, the God of impossibilities. And when we let them go, the list is endless. I'm sure even as I speak, you feel in your heart the things that God is calling you to let go. When you identify them, the next thing is to surrender them to God in prayer. When you identify that which is letting you down, when you identify that that is pulling you down from running your race, God is calling you to take them to prayer. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Second Corinthians 12, 9. The word of God says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My prayer is made, my power is made perfect in weaknesses. Therefore, I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that the Christ power may rest on me. It is not easy, but by the grace of God, we are made perfect in those weaknesses. Give us Psalm 73, 26. Psalm 73, 26. Psalm 73, 26. says, my flesh and my heart may fail. It is normal to experience those challenges. But God is my strength of my heart and my portion forever. We may feel that we cannot make it on our own. Our heart, our, sometimes we are so weak to forgive. We look like we are so full of pride that we cannot even apologize. We, we keep on wondering, from today, hataansa kunitharau. That is the flesh that God is talking about. That may fail, but the grace of God will give us the strength that we need, that we may let go. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. Says that, uh, beyond, uh, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? What is so hard that you feel that you cannot let go? What is so hard that you feel that on your own you cannot make it? God is speaking to us this evening and is reminding us that he is God of all mankind. He is the God of the weak. He is the God of the strong. He is the God of the weary. He is the God of the sick. And there is nothing that is too hard for him. When we surrender this to God, we should do it by faith. Just like Abraham took a step of faith without knowing what is going to come. Just like the mother of Moses did this without knowing where Moses will land. And our faith in God. So after we have surrendered number three, now we shift our focus and our mind and push our hearts to trust God and believe that he has taken over. We have identified. We have surrendered them. Now we have to make our mind believe and trust that God has taken over. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. That says that do not be anxious about anything. In everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You wonder if you let that go. There's somebody who has been probably having your debt. Una umemskuma mpaka umeshindwa. Una shindwa. Na ukinyamasa akatae kukulipa. God is speaking to you this evening. Be anxious about nothing. But in everything, by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, Make your request known to God. Matthew 6, 25. Matthew 6, 25. I'll paraphrase. 25 to 33. Talks about that uh, you should not be anxious of what you will eat or drink or what you're going to wear. And he says that you look at the bands of the air that do not plant, they do not harvest. 
But God provides for them. How about us? Look at the bands of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bands. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. How are you, are you not much more valuable than them? And then there's another verse that really challenges them, me. Verse 27. It says, Who of you by worrying can earn a single hour of your life? When you carry all that worry, when you carry all the anxiety, what is it can you change? Praise the name of the Lord. What is it can you change because you're very anxious? Once we surrender to God, let's walk by faith and believe that we are safe in the hands of God. Sometimes it is not easy, but as you have said, it is the grace of God that helps us in our weaknesses. What happens when you hold and we don't allow God? When you hold and we don't allow God, we hinder God from achieving his purpose in our lives. The story of uh, David in 2 Samuel chapter 12, 16 to 24 talks about a scenario where David's son became very sick, the one he had given birth with Bathsheba. David fasted for seven days without food, praying for this child. And unfortunately, the child died. When he died, they were so worried what they are going to tell him. But David was so strong because he knew if God has chosen to, this, to take this son, I also let him go. Praise the name of the Lord. And we are told that uh, he showered and put the best of his clothes and told his servant to eat and drink. And then verse uh, 22 says, verse 22, he says, he answered, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows, the Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. And that follows that. After that, but now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back? The same way, worry cannot change anything. I will, uh, will, I, I will go to him, but will not return to, to me. And uh, the next verses that follows that not long before, when he let it go, God blessed him with another son, King Solomon, who was the wisest man in the world and reigned after him. So when we imagine if he was crying and cursing God, but when he let it go and he glorified God through that, he gave God an opportunity to glorify himself and blessed him with another king. The same way as we have read when <clears throat> when Abraham surrendered Isaac, God was glorified when he provided a ram. And from that we say, we got the name Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. That in the mountain of the Lord, God provides. What if Abraham had held the son? What if he had refused and, and, uh, and made his mind not to obey God? So when we hold so much, we pro prevent God from accomplishing his purposes in our lives. We also deny God the opportunity to be glorified in our hearts. Also, when we don't allow to let go, we stay wounded and we keep on bleeding even to the wrong people. We keep on bleeding to the wrong people. We live lives of bitterness. Hebrews 12, 15. Hebrews 12, 15. He says that looking carefully, if we go back to 14 a little bit. Pursue peace with all people and holiness with, it, with which no one will see God. Next verse. Looking carefully, Lest anyone, give me an IV, please, this something. Anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest root of bitterness grow up and cause trouble and defile many. When you keep holding the grudges and the bitterness, it not only harms you, 
you also become harmful to the people around you. You grow bitterness. I don't know whether you've encountered with people who are bitter. You just ask them something small and they are up in arms. They, they behave like they are being stung by a wasp because of the unforgiveness of the grudges and the bitterness. They have filled themselves. When you keep to your heart, you deny God an opportunity to heal you and you become bitter and wounded. But on the other side, when you let God and let go, when you let go and let God, God brings spiritual freedom. God brings healing. God brings liberty and sets you free. Psalms 147 verse 3. Psalms 147 verse 3. He says that he heals the broken heart and binds up their hoods. When you surrender to God, those hoods that have been recurring over and over again, that is what God is interested with. He heals them and binds up. Also, when we let go, we allow ourselves to make the best of things. We, 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 we allow better things to rise up. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, the story of Joseph. We know Joseph was in a very sad and challenging situation when he was sold by his brothers. He had every reason to carry bitterness. He had every reason to be unforgiving. But he chose otherwise. We never had Joseph complaining even a single day. Instead, in Genesis 20, 50, 20, he says, when the brothers came to them, he never even told them what they had done. It is them that realized that they had done wrong to him. And he said, you intended harm to me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done in saving many lives. So when we let go, we give an opportunity for the best of things. The more we own, the more we deny great things happening in our lives. And as I conclude, also, when we let go, we free ourselves from needless worries and anxieties. The things that gives us sleepless nights, when we let go, God gives us peace. Second Chronicles 2015. Second Chronicles 2015. He talks about uh, when King Jehoshaphat went to the battle. And he realized that uh, <clears throat> it was such a big battle that he could not conquer. He was so afraid. But God spoke to him and told him, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this army. For the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. The fights that you're fighting are not your fight. They belong to God. So when you let go, those fears, you give God an opportunity to take over your battles and fight for you. And lastly, First Kings, I'm really rushing through because of time. First Kings 17, 8 to 16. Kings 17, 8 to 16, about the, the window of Sarapheth. She was visited by Prophet Elijah in a time of famine. And the only thing she earned was a little flour and oil. And she was telling uh, Prophet Elijah that this is the only thing that we have. We eat with my son and we die. But Elijah, being a man of God, he demanded, go and prepare something for me. This lady, with all the fear, with all the anxiety, did not refuse. And when she gave in that little flour, when she gave in that uh, oil, it gave the best of the moment. She never lacked oil and flour from her house until the famine was over. That is my encouragement to you, my dear brothers and sisters. We have held things so much. They are wearing us down, but God is calling us. We can only have the best of the moments when we let go and let God. There are times that you are faced with challenges and we don't know what to do. Let's go 
and let God. Ambia mungu umefika mwisho and let God take over. This one time I said I'll give you a testimony when before I leave. I've seen this. This is not among the many other testimonies that I have about letting go and letting God. When I was leaving my precious, my previous uh, workstation, I left in a time of transition. We are under a principle that we stayed there for over 10 years. And during COVID time came another one who was very new to the system, actually was not even Kenyan, and was not really sure how things are done. So I was myself, I don't know for whatever reason, and some other, like five other teachers had gotten greener pastures and wanted to leave. Initially, the principal who left was, um, was giving tokens of appreciation, especially for teachers that had served for long. So when this other principal came, he said that there is no document that shows that you needed any appreciation. We have been paying your salary, we have given your pensions, we owe you nothing. And he made it very clear. I went home. I remembered how much I served in that institution for a long time. And I remembered the words of God in the book of uh, Exodus. The works, the uh, Exodus and written them somewhere. The word of God in the book of Exodus 10, 24. When Moses was pleading to leave the children of Israel, he sent to Pharaoh. He was saying that you go, he was like, go with men only and leave your children and wives. But he said, then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, go worship the Lord, even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flocks and your hands behind. But Moses said that, but Moses said, you must allow us to have sacrifice and burnt offerings to present to our God. Verse 26 says, our livestock too must go, no hoof to be left behind. We must use some of them in worshiping our God. And until we get there, we will not know what you are going to use to worship the Lord. This word, God spoke to me when I was praying, that there's anything that belongs to me in my previous station, I am not leaving it behind. Praise the name of the Lord. I said I am not leaving anything that belongs to me. And we are told in our meetings, the, 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 the new principal spoke to us in a meeting like this. I went to my knees and I said, God, this gentleman has said, but I know you are the final word. I said, God, I am not going to fight. I leave this battle to you. But one thing I know, anything that belongs to me, I am not leaving it behind. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are supposed to sign our last letters as we receive our certificates of appreciation and everything. I went to the office of the human resource. And he told me that thank you for the service that you've been giving to us. And now we wish you well. I told him, there's nothing else you're giving me. He said, you are told, there's nothing you're carrying here. I said, no, for me, I'm not yet done with this place. Praise the name of the Lord. He told me, unless you go to the principal, the new principal himself, and talk to him. But at the moment, he's not in the country, but he's supposed to come today. But I don't know what time he's coming. I asked him, can you give me his number? He said, no. So when I was walking... I found the corridor being cleaned. Venye, corridors in Aoshua. So sing, I went, there was a lot of water that was pouring down there. So sing, he told me, he saw me from the office the way I was wondering where to step. He said, there's another back door that is only used by priests because it was an institution led by priests. Imagine the miracle of God. When I stepped on that corridor, guess whom I found? The principal who was abroad, he had just arrived. Praise the name of the Lord. So I just went and talked to him and asked him, how are you? He didn't even know me well because he was new. I introduced himself and I told him how long I had worked in that institution and I was leaving. 
And I told him, I remember what you said. But I asked him, do you think it is fair just to say, to wish me well and go? And believe it or not, he told me, I don't know you very well, but I will inquire. And in case there is anything you need, I will call you. I went home and started thanking God and telling God, this is not my battle. Because, you know, there are those others who are left in the past, and we know the packages that they are left with. It was such a big institution. Money was not really a problem. So I went and went home. I continued praying and telling God, I'm not leaving anything behind. Like around three, four days, I saw a new number because I didn't even have his number and told me to go to that institution the following day. When I went, I was directed to the office of the same resource person who had dismissed me. And he told me, I don't know what you talked with Father Peter, but it's a message for you. And guess what? I think that should not go on there. There was a check of 100,000 as a token of appreciation. Praise the name of the Lord. So sometimes we struggle with issues that our God can handle. There is nothing that is too hard for God. Stop struggling with those small battles that you are struggling with. Lift your faith to God and let God fight your battles. Praise the name of the Lord. Let God fight our battles. When we let God and we let go, God takes over. And he gave me caution that of the five of us who left, I'm the only one who was given the token by the grace of God. So I am encouraging my brethren, stop fighting, losing battles. Enough is enough. Just let go and let God and our God shall be glorified.